David Brewster here, new episode of Chord Play. This is the Chords of George Lynch, and I've had a lot of requests to feature more of George's music and ideas. And if you search around on the channel, you'll find three episodes of Three for All uh, surrounding George and some of his licks. There's also two episodes of Chord Play for Dokken. There's an electric episode and also an acoustic episode for Dokken's music. This episode is going to dive even deeper into his music from Dokken and Lynch Mob. And he has some solo material that I actually didn't get to when I put this lesson together. There was plenty to grab, you know, from Dokken and Lynch Mob that we haven't looked at yet. But George is a huge influence on me. He definitely got me interested in these twisted chords and triads that he uses a lot. And, you know, my chord influences definitely early on. I had Van Halen and Jakey e. Lee, Warren D. Martini and Robin Crosby from Rat. Of course, George Lynch. You know, but all these players, you know, were using sus chords and kind of twisted triads and chords and, you know, adding ninths and elevenths and thirteens to their voicings. And I really liked it where it was like, wow, it's, it's more than just a power chord. You're hearing these extra, you know, tonalities and sounds, which is really cool. And that's basically what this lesson is going to focus on. And as far as the music in this episode, I did mention a mix of Dokken and Lynch Mob, but I am going to pull, you know, from an assortment of different, you know, songs and albums from both the Dokken years and the Lynch Mob years of George Lynch. And there's a lot of music. There's a lot that I haven't covered so far. Like I mentioned a moment ago, there's technically two Dokken episodes, electric and acoustic. Here's a third chord play for George Lynch. And there's still tons and tons, dozens and dozens of other moments and songs and riffs and all sorts of cool stuff, you know, surrounding George Lynch. With the opening, that's Wicked Sensation by Lynch Mob from the album Wicked Sensation, and it's something like this. of George's twisted, you know, chords and triads, because right there he's starting with a C-sharp, you know, power chord, C-sharp 5, and then it's a C-sharp flat 5 right there, so lower that G-sharp to G-natural, and then it's like a C-sharp sus 4, because you're grabbing F-sharp right there, so you're literally moving that, uh, you know, the second note of that power chord down, you know, chromatically like that. Right there, you're basically walking down and grabbing that C-sharp sus4, and then it's technically, uh, I guess you could think of that as like a B sus4, or part of an E power chord right there, that B and E note, like that. And it's the open strings just for a second, and you go back to C-sharp 5. And that's where you have this little fill, and I just screwed up the pinch harmonic, but you got... And what you're going to do there is grab that C sharp, and you're kind of doing a hammer on pull off between that F sharp and G, and then grab C sharp and then two E's right there, and you want to squeal it. Do something like that. Start the first riff again. The last time you got this. right back in that riff. You know, it's an ass-kicking riff. Really cool. Now, as far as some of George's, you know, twisted chords, let's just look at what he was doing right there with that C-sharp 5, the C-sharp flat 5, and the C-sharp sus 4, technically. That. twisting that second note of the chord, the fifth to the flat fifth or flat five, and then the flat five to the sus four right there. And we can keep going. You could actually grab the major third right there, that F, or the minor third in that E note right there. And 
continue twisting that chord, you could also reach up here and grab the flat six, you know, this A note. <laughs> A sharp and there's your regular six you know a C sharp six think of it like that boogie blues you know that's a little bit too normal for George he would probably opt more for that flat six it sounds dark and kind of evil so you can definitely kind of play around with those chords and the next example is going to flesh this out in another key so you can see it somewhere else on the neck up is Unchain the Night from Under Lock and Key, and you can actually see some of those twisted chords in another key, like I mentioned. And it's something like this. You know, something like that. So now we're in the key of E, and we're going to twist those chords almost like we did in Wicked Sensation, but it's like this. Right. There you can see there's E5, E flat 5, E sus 4, just like Wicked Sensation, but right here. Right there, the second time when you get to that E flat 5, go to an A power chord. Playing with the flat five right there, that B flat. That's one thing you're gonna notice about George Lynch. He uses flat fives all the time. Diminished, you know, ideas, flat five, you know, scale runs the blue scale, and he mixes it in his chords too, right there. Right there, start it again. right there do that you know e5 to e flat 5 and then hit a harmonic on the third fret on the g string and then just slowly dip your bar and you're going to unchain the night with that one next up is night by night from back for the attack and this is actually in standard tuning as far as the album version but i'm going to perform this and demonstrate it tuned down a half step that way this whole lesson is uniformed and in the same tuning but night by night features some of the more of these twisted chords like this <laughs> spaced out almost like an ACDC riff, but it's, you know, a B power chord to a G right there in open position. And then here's the twist. It's an E over G sharp, which is a half step away. That G sharp is a half step away from the next chord. And then an A power chord. And a little single note riff. And then do it again. Then end on E5. This is Back for the Attack, but it's not from the Back for the Attack album. This was actually a leftover track from the Under Lock and Key sessions. And then they recorded it and released it, and it was part of the Dream Warriors EP. And that had Dream Warriors, Back for the Attack, and the live version of Paris is Burning. And then eventually they released this on the Doc and Greatest Hits, which was, you know, not that long ago. But Back for the Attack, you know, kicks ass like this. <laughs> Something like that. So it's really busy and you're doing this. So that's basically like a G5 over A to A5 right there. You know, a little piece of C5, a little piece of D5. So there's four chords, but you're really just playing it on those middle two strings like that. Right there, he's doing that CC to D kind of squeal. Then you want to do that first riff again. Right there, the second time, you're going to do that G5 to A5 over A. The C over A, and then it's a D over A like that. So that 
that F sharp and D with the open A. And then the, that uh, fill, you're just going to stay on that C. Like that. And the third time you're doing... G5, A5, the C5 to that D over A, and then it's just the C power chord right there. It's spelled out, and then the last time, right there you're going to do... So all the way through it like this. Next up is the song She's Evil But She's Mine, and this is from Lynch Mob from the Wicked Sensation album, and it's got some of the same chords we saw in Back for the Attack, it's a little different, and it's got this lazy kind of rock groove, which is really cool, something like this. <laughs> kind of rolling into that A power chord from that G note. And right there, you're kind of going in this uh, G5 over A to a little piece of A7 implied. Just moving that uh, D note down to C sharp. And then rolling from that C note into a D5 right there in open position up here and you're grabbing like a little piece of D sus forward to D major and then kind of move into that or smear into that D5 again and then I'm hearing this like that. it's kind of buried in the mix there's something happening right there it's really hard to pick out but that's what I came up with that little flat 5 action going right back into A Next up is Dance of the Dogs, also from Lynch Mob and the Wicked Sensation album, and this features this really unusual uh, F sharp 11, which I'm a big fan of this chord, and George is kind of playing with it, and uh, it's very simple, but I love these kind of just tonalities and textures just using basic chords like this. <laughs> sharp 11, I mean, it's a very common chord. You can hear it in Rooster from Alice in Chains, and there's, you know, Rush songs and a whole bunch of bands that have used this sound. Like that. Just think of an F sharp major, you know, bar chord. But then you're going to, you know, open up those top strings. And that's that F sharp 11 right there. But George really isn't playing the full chord like that. He's really just grabbing the top, uh, the top part. Grabbing this, and he's kind of hammering onto that B note right there, which is really just a double of the 11. And it has a real dreamy, you know, sound like that. It kind of wiggles the bar a little bit for that kind of spacey sound. roll in this G power chord, uh, open E to F sharp to that G5, and then an E5, and then you do it again. Something like that. Cool riff, really basic, but it sounds great. Next up is Tangled in the Web from the second Lynch Mob album, it's just called Lynch Mob, and this is really cool, like this.
So you're starting with this F sus2 and you're kind of moving it around. It reminds me of Hendrix a little bit, also a little bit of Zeppelin just because it's kind of, you know, spacey and atmospheric. <laughs> shifting that F sus2 around the fretboard. And then do it again. And this time. So it's really different. You're just maintaining that same chord uh, fingering, but then shifting it around to create these different tonalities. to C to that F and the G right there, you know, kind of implied chords, but that's a really cool intro. Um, really unusual because there's actually horns kind of hitting which is you know kind of unusual for George Lynch but I like it and this, uh, this part right here <laughs> Six, you're grabbing that E note. And then G minor flat six, grabbing that E flat right there. And just that open position, uh, G5. And the single note riff. So that C to D, open G to open D. And then C to B flat. This is the elusive verse riff from Just Got Lucky from the Tooth and Nail album, and it's something like this. <laughs> actually begins uh, with that opening you know guitar solo and then you hear the riff begin while the solo is still happening you know before the verse starts um, but when it kicks in you're doing that so it's literally D5 to a D sus2 right there grabbing that G note and then it's C5 over D right here basically flips to D major right here and he starts playing with that sus4 again that G note like this and you're gonna move that partial D back to a partial C and bang on that so you can do that partial C twice back to D and then you're gonna play with that sus4 again so that's when the verse starts when it moves to that D so this first part with those uh, two chords that D5 to C5 action that's still like the last little bits of the intro guitar solo during this. And right there, the verse, and that's when you go to that, uh, D major. And the second time right there, you're going to grab the C sus2. G over B, like that, and then loop all that again. That's going to 
wrap this episode of Chord Play with the chords of George Lynch. And George has been a huge influence of mine, you know, over the years. And I remember my teenage years in my bedroom, you know, reading guitar magazines. And it seemed like he was in every other issue was, you know, either George Lynch feature or a lesson or a song transcription or something. So definitely, you know, it, it definitely put gas in my, you know, Van Halen uh, approved, you know, beginning. Because I was hopelessly inspired and influenced by Eddie. But then by the time I found, you know, George Lynch and J.K. Lee and John Sykes and some of these other players, of course, you know, Warren D. Martini and Robin Crosby, you know, the 80s, you know, hard rock and hair metal gang, I just dove in, you know, head first. And George definitely unlocked, you know, exotic scales, exotic chords and these, you know, different tonalities, these dark and kind of almost scary, you know, sounds. And Eddie was kind of more bright and happy. And George always seemed a little darker, a little more twisted, you know, compared to Eddie, but I definitely love and respect both these players, and, you know, George Lynch, is, like I said, has been a huge influence of mine, so there's some great ideas to tap into, definitely dive into some Dokken and Lynch Mob, and that's going to wrap this episode, so please leave some uh, feedback and comments, please subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material, thank you.